We want to pay particular attention to the information in row 43 across the projection years, as it highlights the projected net profit of the business. Remember, it is acceptable to show a net loss in some months. Typically, you will see this in the early months of many businesses. Other businesses, such as seasonal businesses, will show a loss every year in the months where they are not operating. You would hope to see a growing trajectory for the, for the net profit over the first three years, ideally reaching the entrepreneur's income goal by year three. Looking at Stephen's year one net profits, we see that he's projected to lose $2,708 the first year. When we analyze the revenue and expenses, we see that Stephen had $9,786 in total sales, which worked for him as he and his team figured out business operations. You can also see that the business invested in, in advertising and marketing, and also had a, a substantial purchase of equipment. These purchases helped get the business productive and known. When we look at cash flow, we see that the business is on solid ground ending the year with $5,902 of cash on hand. This is primarily because of VR support and Stephen's use of the PASS plan. We also see yearly and monthly break-even targets, which Stephen did not hit. Let's look beyond year one. Showing a loss or very low net profits in the second and third years points to problems. The business may need to adapt and make adjustments. Many entrepreneurs receiving government benefits already live underneath the poverty limits. Ideally, providers and team members will support entrepreneurs to develop businesses that will reach profitability as quickly as possible. This may mean that additional refinement is necessary beyond the initial projections. When this happens, the team should talk with the VR counselor and the other community supports who helped to develop the business plan and begin operations. Talk with them about the numbers and ask for ideas about how to either increase revenues, decrease costs, or do both. Looking closer at year two revenue projections in 2020, we see that Stephen has increased his sales from $9,786 in 2019 to $13,850 in 2020. This is an increase of about $4,000 or roughly 30%. He also shows a net profit in 2020 of roughly or exactly $3,065 based on these projections. Let's look at cash flow for 2020. At the end of the year 2020, Stephen has $13,239 in cash on hand. That's his equity. He's in a comfortable place to make a bold move or two. It's also important to note that Stephen's pass is scheduled to end in December 2020. You see here that it's $611 in December 2020, but there's no pass when we look at January 2021. So that additional cash infusion to the business will stop. Stephen could continue his business along the lines of how he operated in 2020, making a small profit. But Stephen, like most small business owners, wants to make as much money as he can while using his skills in carpentry and construction and having a good time being around people he enjoys. Stephen has built a strong network of support, both as a Part of his life prior to starting the business and also as a result of business research and feasibility activities. When reviewing his financial projections with his VR counselor, SBDC supports, and team, a suggestion was made to contract out some preparation and production work to increase sales capacity during the busier summer months. Stephen and his team have budgeted $650 a month in contract help, estimated roughly at 10 hours a week at $15 an hour. This contract help 
would, help, would pay for additional production assistance. Projections are that Stephen will more than double his sales in those summer months and generate $30,425 in total sales in 2021. His net profit is estimated at $10,781. You can see break-even sales for that year. And also that Stephen ends the year with the same amount of cash in 2021, $13,239, as he had at the end of 2020. This is because projections assume that he will take an owner's draw that is equal to the net profits in 2021. 